When you look at, at the graph of a function, okay, it's going to go up and down. It's quite exotic looking. Well, this raises the question, where is a function sort of going down, sort of falling, and when is the function sort of increasing? I mean, you can imagine a function that looks sort of like this. Function sort of goes up and goes down and goes up and goes down and so forth. And I want to tell you sort of how you identify where the function is falling and where the function is rising, or where the function is sometimes called decreasing or increasing. A function is decreasing when the function drops as the x values get larger. Now, this is sort of a, 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 just a teeny point, which really has to be sort of clear, though. You see, when you think about the, the real x line here, right, the axis, you know that the numbers increase when you go off to the right. Boom, 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 boom. OK, fine. So as you go off to the right, the question is, what is the function doing? Now, look what happens. If we start way up here, the function is falling as you go to the right. So this is a, a region where the function is decreasing. But then the function levels off here and starts to go up. So now this is an area where the function is increasing. Then the function starts to decrease again. And then here the function starts to increase. So this is a function where the function first decreases, then increases, then decreases, then increases. OK, fine. What's the big deal? Well, there's not really a big deal. However, let's take a look at some examples just to sort of drive this point home. So here's a parabola looking like curve. And so you can see that the function is first decreasing and then increasing. So where's the region where the function is decreasing? It'd be all the way out from minus infinity all the way up to, to 0. That's the x values. Those are the x values for which the function is decreasing. But then once you go from 0 out, the function starts to increase again. Now why do I make a big stink about this? I make a big stink because a lot of times when we draw pictures, we put these arrows like this to indicate that the thing keeps going. But if you look at the arrow, you might say, hey, that's like a one-way street. I should be going this way. But then if you're looking at it that way, you might be saying, hey, wait a minute. It looks like I'm going up. I'm increasing. Avoid that temptation to think that. And always remember that to see if a function is increasing or decreasing, you always start on the left and then go to the right and ask what would happen if I put a little, a little ball there. If I put a little ball there, it would roll down. And then here, you'd have to push it up. Okay, So that's... Decre Even though the arrow is here, this is still decreasing and then increasing. OK, let's try some more. Whew. OK, this is, this, is, uh, this is a straight line. And what do you see here? Well, here you see it's just going down. So this is decreasing. And in fact, you can see the, the rate of decrease is always constant. So this is decreasing everywhere, decreasing everywhere. All right. Here's a function that's sort of like a TP-like function. This actually is a function that we saw at least something that's similar to it a long time ago when we looked at some basic functions, it's like the absolute value function. The absolute value function, of course, has this sharp V-like look. This is not quite that. This is like a TP look, which means that probably it's like the negative of an absolute value. Somehow it's flipped, and we'll talk about that later. Anyway, the point is, what's going on here, you can see that the function is first increasing until it gets to x equals 2. And then after x equals 2 in this range, the function starts to fall. So this function is increasing for x between negative infinity all the way up to 2, because in this range, the function is climbing. And then from 2 out to infinity, the function is falling. So first increasing, then decreasing. OK. Let's try another one. This is a function that just is this line that's parallel to the x-axis, but, but two units down. So this is actually uh, negative 2 here. And what's going on here? Well, here what's happening is we have the function being constant. It's neither increasing nor decreasing. It's constant. It, it's unchanging. Its height is always at negative 2. So in fact, we call this constant. This is a constant function. OK? Here's a, here's a kinky curve, because it sort of does something, and then it kinks ding, and does this. So what's it going on here? Well, it's constant everywhere up to x equals 0. So from negative infinity to 0, it's constant. But then from here on, increasing. So increasing here. From 0 to positive infinity, increasing. From negative infinity to x equals 0, constant. See, piece of cake once you get these things down. Here's a function that's very kinky. It's this, then kinks, and then kinks again. So then what do we see here? From negative infinity to x equals 0, we see it's constant. Then we see from 0 to 3, it's decreasing. And then from 3 onward, it's constant again. So this is constant to x equals 0. Then from 0 to x equals 3, it's decreasing. And then from 3 to infinity, it's constant. Okay. 
even more kinky. You can see we're getting kinkier as we go along here, not surprising. We have uh, kink here, kink here, kink here, and kink here. What do we have? Decreasing, increasing, decreasing, increasing. And so how does it go exactly? The function is decreasing from negative infinity up to negative 3. Then from negative 3 all the way to x equals 0, we have an increasing thing. Then from x equals 0 to x equals 3, it's decreasing again. And then from x equals 3 to infinity, it increases one last time. So decreases, increases, decreases, increases. Great. What about this one? It's another line. But now the line is actually going up as you go to the right. So this is increasing everywhere. Increasing everywhere. All right. Here's some more kinky stuff for those people who get into this. A little kinky here. It's decreasing, then it's constant for a little teeny bit, but it is constant here, and then increasing again. So what do we have? We have decreasing from minus x equals minus infinity all the way up to 0. It's decreasing all on this region. Then from x equals 0 to x equals 1, it seems to be constant. And then from x equals 1 onward, the thing is increasing. So decreasing to x equals 0, from x equals 0 to x equals 1, it's constant. And then from 1 to infinity, increasing. Great. One last one. This is sort of like a cubic thing. This has like an x cubed in it, probably. And what do I see? Well, even though it sort of slows down a little bit and then goes up, we actually see it's always increasing. So this actually is increasing. Climb, 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 slow climb, but still climbing, slow climb, still climbing, slow climb, still climbing, and now really fast climbing. This is increasing everywhere, increasing everywhere. So the notion of increasing, decreasing, and then constant. And then, of course, also, where you change from increasing to decreasing, we have either a max or a min. So in fact, if you have something that has this basic flavor, and I'll try to put everyone on, maybe even a sharp point. Then what you see is, whenever you change from either increasing to decreasing, wherever that change happens, we're going to have a point where the, the, the function sort of changes. And this, in this case, we'd have a, a max. So if you go from increasing to decreasing, you must have a max, right? You're climbing and then falling, you must have a high point. Similarly, if you go from a decreasing to an increasing, there you must have a low point. So these are called maxes, and this is called min, a min. So if you go from an increasing and then to a decreasing, you must have another max. If you go from a decreasing to an increasing, you must have another min, and so forth. So you can find all the, max, all the maxes and mins by looking at where the function changes from being increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. And you have either a max or a min. Great. You can identify these special points on your favorite function. Enjoy.